All right. Uh, in lesson three, I'm going to be doing the same uh, example that I did yesterday or in lesson two, which was a 1D conduction heat transfer. Except for today, I want to add uh, some heat generation. So if you remember from lesson two, we had a rectangle in sizes of uh, 10 and here and uh, 5 in the vertical length K or uh, conduction coefficient was 100 oh my let me do it okay it was 100 and temperature here was 100 and temperature here was 20 and um, that was uh, what I did yesterday and the Q was 100 times 80 which is the temp difference in temperatures over 10 which is the length in X direction this was our X direction which turned out to be 800 now what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how to add some heat generation in a uh, uh, 1D conduction. So I'm going to add some heat generation of, um, um, let's say, 2000 from bottom. So some uh, heat flux or heat generation or heat is going to enter our rectangle from the bottom with 2000 uh, units and all the um, properties of a material in terms of uh, um, uh, conduction coefficient and temperatures on the left and right are going to be the same and what you will see is the change in the vector of heat transfer yesterday the heat transfer was um, parallel to x direction but today with this heat generation in here we're going to have some uh, shift in the direction of uh, heat flux vectors so with that let's uh, go to ANSYS and do the analysis okay we're in ANSYS and um, I'm gonna start my analysis in here click preferences and make sure that I'm going with thermal I click OK and then go to preprocessor pre and add uh, an element like yesterday I'm going to pick um, quadratic 8 node click OK options again I'm going to stick with the default so OK this one and um, there's not going to be any real constants for the element that I picked so I'm going to jump to the materials material models thermal uh, conductivity and uh, the conductivity or conduction uh, coefficient I'm gonna give 100 again close this window and go to modeling today instead of going through just uh, simply making an making a rectangle which is very easy I'm gonna go with steps by steps I'm gonna make some uh, key points in active CS what the first key point at point zero 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 point zero zero the second one at x equals 10 and y equals 0 1 and 2 the second the third one I'm gonna put at y equals 5 and the fourth uh, key point is gonna be at x equals 0 at 5 equals 5 or y equals 5 and then I'm gonna create four lines straight lines from here to here click OK and then create an area arbitrary by lines so I'm going to pick one two three four click OK and my area is generated just like what I did yesterday yes uh, or, or in lesson two I just came to this area and picked rectangle and gave the two dimensions um, and then my rectangle was uh, generated today in this example I just wanted to show you how you can go with um, uh, def defining key points and then lines and then areas and go from there and then again like uh, 
yesterday or the previous lesson I need to do meshing I'm gonna try a new meshing technique I'm gonna pick mesh tools in here today and go with smart size pick smart size 3 and mesh areas click my area click OK and now the mesh is generated so this what this meshing is kind of like automatic or smart uh, meshing compared to the meshing that I picked that I did yet in lesson two which was manual so I picked the sizes uh, size of the or the number of divisions per line manually and then uh, meshed my area they're both the same uh, or meshing is uh, dependent on what you need from your analysis both of this could work here you see the the number of elements that I have for this sample are more than the number of elements I had for the for my same model yesterday or in lesson two because I changed the number of divisions in smart size to three which is uh, or I made it a little bit finer meshing now again I have to go to load come here make sure I'm going with a steady state uh, analysis I'm gonna close this window okay come to define loads apply thermal I'm gonna apply temperature of 100 on the left on the line on the left apply and a temperature of 20 on the line on the right so far is everything is exactly similar to the model and lesson 2 but here I'm gonna add a heat generation on line on the line button I'm gonna say heat generation of uh, 2000 from the bottom and the other thing I want to do is I want to say that heat flux on the uh, line on top is 0 which means no heat is uh, flowing flowing out of the out of the rectangle from the top line so my model is ready I can close preprocessor and go to solution solve current LS okay and solution is done now let's uh, go to general post process plot results counter plots and nodal solution let's see how temperatures are changing so the temperatures are changing quite differently from the example in the previous uh, lesson in the previous lesson everything was pretty uh, uh, consistent or uh, the lines were all uh, vertical but here the temperature of 100 is more or it takes more room in here in the bottom left corner of my model and uh, let's see how thermal heat flux uh, is in X direction so it's not like yesterday as there was a constant 800 um, heat flux through X direction actually here you see there is uh, there is a negative uh, negative value which is pretty small but still in the bottom left corner we have a negative value and if I want to see the vector uh, form of the heat flux this is going to be this uh, uh, form of the heat flux and because I didn't I, I because I insulated the top line which means there's no heat flux to the top core, top uh, side of this model uh, the heat flux on the very top of the model is pretty parallel to the horizontal or in X direction while heat flux in the bottom is more uh, towards uh, topwards and as, as it moves to the right it becomes more and more uh, horizontal or in X direction Um, the other thing that I might be um, interested in is uh, 
let's go to list results, nodal solution, and nodal temperatures. So temp temperatures for each and all of the nodes are shown to me. And so they're pretty um, different from the example in lesson two. And um, this, I guess, uh, concludes this uh, lesson three, a very basic example, again, a 1D heat conduction uh, with heat generation.